Hi, in this video we're going to show you a free tool you could use to synchronize folders on your computer. So you could synchronize a folder with another folder on a local computer or on a secondary drive and so on. So we just did a video on their backup program which was actually really nice and that's free as well. But this is a synchronization program. So synchronization works a little differently than backup where backup typically backups from a source to a destination and then synchronizing is used to keep two folders exactly the same. So you could synchronize from source to destination or you could keep both folders exactly the same. So if you delete something from one, it'll delete it from the other. If you add something to one, it'll add it to the other and that type of thing. All right, so we're gonna show you how this program works. It's pretty simple to use. So I already have a sync job set up for my pictures. And if I hover over it, you could see what it's doing there. And if I right click on it, I could do something like edit it, copy it, delete it, assign it to a group, rename a group, execute it, set up automation so I could have it run manually at a certain interval or a certain time, uh, create a desktop shortcut so that way I could just double click it without having to open the program, uh, see information on it, like that. Okay, so we're going to set up a new task here by clicking on new task. So we need to pick our source folder here. So we're gonna do the documents folder. And for our destination, we're going to put it in our backup folder here. So you should make a new folder, otherwise it's just gonna dump everything right into the main folder you choose. So we're gonna call this documents. All right, so then you could synchronize subfolders, which is checked by default, which is probably what you want to do, and support for long file names if needed. And then we have some priority options here for the speed that you could check out. All right, we'll click on Next. All right, so now here is where you decide which way you're going to go. So if I want to synchronize from the real documents folder to my backup documents folder, I check this box here. If I want to go the other way, I check this. If I want to go both ways, then I would check them both. So that way when something is added or removed or changed in one, it'll be reflected in the other. But I'm just going to do from the C drive to the backup drive for this demonstration. Okay, so now the options here are to synchronize all files. Then you could skip files if the timestamps are the same, uh, skip files if the timestamps and file sizes are the same, or copy regardless of the timestamps and file sizes. So we'll leave the defaults. And then there's an option to synchronize newer files if you want to check that. So it'll synchronize files with newer timestamps only. And then while you're running it, you could always come up here and navigate to one of the uh, steps here just by clicking on them from the menu right there. Okay, we'll click on next. Okay, so this option here will delete redundant files or folders. So if you have a file or folder in the target that's not in the source, it'll delete it. So that way, Everything will be synchronized and you won't have any leftover files or folders at the destination. And then if you do do that, you could have it move them to the recycle bin just in case you want to recover them. And if you want to have it set the archive bit showing that it's been backed up, you could do that. Delete the archive bit. Ignore hidden files and folders. And then compare file contents. So this will synchronize files with different content only. And then synchronize the folder attributes. And then if you need to copy permissions, you know, user access rights to files and folders, you could check that as well. All right, we're just gonna leave everything at the default here. Okay, now you could set up your inclusions and exclusions. So if you want to include something specifically or exclude a certain type of file, you could set that up. You can see right now, star dot star is on the include list. That means everything is going to be synchronized. So you could actually delete this and just add something like star.docx for only Word documents if you only want to synchronize Word documents. So that's what this is used for. And then if you want to specifically synchronize files that have changed within a set amount of days, you could check this box and choose the uh, number of days right here. All right, we'll click on Next. All right, so now you could synchronize at a certain time every so often. Uh, you could set it to synchronize on changes. So if something is changed, it'll recognize it and then automatically synchronize it to make sure that things are synchronized in pretty much real time. And then you could set what you want to have it applied to, the source or destination or both. 
And then you could also pause the task after synchronization if you want to prevent it from running a set amount of time. All right, then you could synchronize on a system event. Let's say when you turn your computer on, have it automatically synchronize, or when you log off, or when you map a drive, or when you plug in a USB drive. All right, then you have some restrictions. If you want to fine tune what days files and folders will be synchronized for weekdays and month days. And if you want to have synchronization only occur within a certain time frame, you could set that up here. All right, then we have the synchronization condition. So if you want to execute the synchronization only if a certain condition is met below, you could do that. And here are some choices for you. So have it only synchronize if a file or folder does not exist, for example, or if a file is not active, for example. All right, let's move on. Okay, then we have some actions here. So you could add an action here before and after synchronization. Execute a file, pause, show a message, connect a drive. Uh, after synchronization, send a report via email, disconnect the network drive, restart the computer. And then you could have those actions be executed if the synchronization has been canceled. All right, let's go to the next step here. All right, so let's call this documents. Then you could configure groups. So if you want to group your jobs, you could do that. And then if you want to have it show the reports, always or on errors or never. So when you run the job and it's done, it'll pop up a report automatically unless you change it here. And we'll do the preview so that way you could see what's going to happen. And then if you want to require user confirmation before synchronization, you can check this. And then the default is to use high speed synchronization. And then you could also assign a hotkey to run the job just by pressing that key combination. All right, so we'll click on apply. All right, so now we have our new documents synchronization job here. So we'll highlight it and click on execute. And now you can see since I enabled that box to show the preview first, here's what it's going to do. So here's the destination on the E drive and here's the source. So there's nothing to update, nothing to delete because this is the first time it's been ran. So we'll click on execute. Okay, so here is our report here. So nothing to compare or delete because it's new and it's synchronized 90 files, so 100%. And no warnings or anything else. Okay, so now let's go to the documents here. Let's make a new file. Call it new with a exclamation so it shows up at the top of the list. Okay, so now we will execute it again. And now you can see what it's going to do. It's going to copy that file from documents over to the destination here. So let's make sure it's not there. So here's our backup documents. We'll sort by name here. So, so that file is not here. All right, so now let's execute. All right, let's go back over here, refresh. And now you can see we have that file that showed up because it was synchronized. And then the report shows that there was one file that was updated. And then once you have your listing of sync jobs here, you could edit them as needed, delete them, start a new one, execute them, and so on. All right, so this program is free for personal usage, meaning you're, you know, you're just gonna use it at home for your one computer, or I guess for other computers if you wanna do that as well, but it's not meant to be used for free in a business environment. Okay, so I will put a link in the description where you could download Sync Credible, and then you could try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm.